This is it. Day one, the first dive that we're doing today, and I am absolutely jumping out of my skin. I'm itching to get out there. We're here on the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef. Lady Elliot Island is just over there. And today I'm just gonna be a sponge, learning absolutely everything about how to actually put myself in the best position to get as close as possible and really get one-on-one -on -one with sharks in a completely wild, pristine environment. Lady Elliot Island is on the southern end of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. It's a place that mum and dad used to come to back way before I was born. Just skimming along the reef flats, look for black tips. Along the way, I'll be joined by shark legend Paul de Gelder and local free diver and conservationist Matty Stewart. This is kind of where I met sharks for the first time, so it's really exciting to be back. You can't outrun a shark in its own environment the way that you could a crocodile. So it is an apex predator, but it's a different level of apex predator because you have to go into their home to see them. Matty grew up on the Great Barrier Reef. And of course, Paul knows sharks better than anyone. He's an absolute legend. I've been diving with great white sharks for a, a bunch of years now. They're incredible to see. They blow your mind. You don't think an animal that big can actually exist in the ocean. And Steve said back in the day, if you can make people fall in love with something, they'll want to protect it. I've got a hunch that it's probably pretty similar to how crocs work. And I want to see the similarities, the differences. You ready, big fella? Let's have a go. Go find sharks. Yeah. The first thing to think about in the water is that a shark is going to pick up on your heart rate. So you do need to remain calm, whether that's fear or excitement. Shark won't know the difference. They're not going to care about you if you're confident. They're only going to pick it up if you're weak or scared. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to say that to people. OK, I'm just going to put you in the water with some sharks now, but whatever you do, don't get excited or scared, because it's just going to make it worse. This environment is so different to what I'm used to. Crocodiles will only inhabit distinct areas and they usually stick quite close to the riverbanks. But out here, in the middle of the ocean, sharks can come at you from any direction. Oh, what a gorgeous sea turtle. Just beautiful. They're such peaceful animals. They let you come right up close to them, share a bit of time with them. Such a special moment. Now, seeing a big sea turtle like that is actually fairly promising for the real big sharks that really mean business. And in fact, we've actually seen a couple of turtles around here with big bite marks in their shells, which means big sharks, like maybe tiger sharks, are actually in the area hunting them down. Turtles are tough, though, incredibly tough. But to a big shark, it's just a crunchy pie. Next, as the tide starts to rise, the local reef sharks begin moving into the reef to feed. Even though there's plenty of sharks around, as soon as I try to get a closer look, they're off. This is such a great learning experience for me. But what I'm starting to see is how in tune these guys are to their environment. Being the top predator, they need to know exactly what's going on. Since they're predators, every sense is tuned in to hunt. And clearly, my presence is making them a bit wary. It is interesting to see how, at this time of day, they're kind of just coming into hunt mode and they're actually searching, they're really curious, they're watching, but still our movement, man, they really pick up on it. So what do you reckon the secret is to actually get close to it? You know, if you chase after them, it sucks them away. So you're yeah, just gonna right. stay calm. If the shark's are near, you don't yeah, want right. to have your arms out too far. Yeah. It's just like dealing with crocs. You don't want to yeah. give it an opportunity to snap it. Because so much of it's movement as well. Yeah. Like I know for crocs, 
you know, when I'm actually getting one to strike at me, they'll be under the water, sitting like an inch below the surface, and all it is is that movement, that little movement, and they can't help themselves. Yeah. But for these sharks, if you give them too much of a movement, they'll just take off. Oh, yeah. So if they come close, then that's a win. Yeah, definitely. We've just gotten word from the drone that's out there scouting. We've got three sharks together. Basically what's happening, the water is washing over that shallow section into a little lagoon. And that's where the sharks love to hunt. So right now there's a big concentration and we're gonna get in the thick of it. All right. Get some shark. I don't think that I would jump into a pit with a crocodile without first knowing what I'm in for. So what we're doing here is preparing Robert for the eventual bigger sharks that he's going to see in the water. You really do have to act like a predator. You do need to remain calm, so keeping your heart rate really mellow is super important. And that requires a lot of attention to how you move in the water, how you act, how you feel. The first shark I come across is a good solid four-footer. But I know the others won't be far. I'm starting to notice that the more I slow down, the less impact I have. And the more sharks I'm starting to see. I tell you what, there's that many sharks in here, you barely know where to look. Everywhere you look, there's just shark, shark, shark. And you can see why there's so many fish that are gathering in here. And all the sharks taking advantage of that. This is just amazing. It's that shallow though, we can barely even get cameras in here. So it's just me trying to shoot everything I can. Bit by bit, I'm able to slowly edge my way closer and closer to this little black tip. Sharks can detect very faint bioelectric impulses and your heartbeat gives off one of them. They have lateral lines down the sides of their body that they can pick up on movements in water so they can hear, feel, smell any kind of distress, any kind of panic. Just like crocodiles, this gives every shark the ability to sense things in the water that we're not even aware of. So by following Maddie's advice, I slow down my movements and I'm able to get closer to these sharks than I ever have before. This shows me that unlike crocodiles, these white tips are tuned to be active hunters. They're constantly moving and always ready to put on the power. Oh, finally getting really up close with those sharks. Everything that I've learnt so far is now really coming into play. I was doing exactly what Madison said, being really calm, lowering my heart rate, and that one beautiful big white tip let me get right up to her. And then in a burst of speed, she was off. That was an awesome, awesome experience. Woohoo!